good morning YouTube land. <clears throat> so as I'm waiting for uh, Saturday morning coffee with Dave uh, to finish uh, getting ready to premiere my weekly podcast, which give it a look. It's interesting. I think it's interesting. I talk about things that I find interesting, um, but I find as far as search algorithms go, by the way, hit like and subscribe. I'm trying to grow the channel here. Um, while I am monetized, I need to up the traffic a little bit because unless you generate a minimum of $100 a month, they don't pay out anything less than that. So you could literally have $99 in your share of the ad revenue. And because it's under 100 Google won't pay you. They just keep the money. <laughs> so I'm making money for them because uh, <clears throat> if my share was $93, I'm sure theirs was, you know, 100 times that. So it'd be nice if I could make a couple bucks, which would help fund some of these things that I do. But... I guess even if it doesn't, I've been doing it for a couple of years this way and growing the channel slowly and organically. But it does help if you not only uh, share, like, subscribe, but also make comments. Apparently comments help the search algorithms if there's conversations going on. It helps them promote it. So <clears throat> today's video is going to be around knives. So I do a lot of knife reviews because I just really like knives. I collect them. I've always been, I don't know, I've always been fascinated by them just as tools. I mean, yeah, guns are interesting and all that kind of stuff, but... You know, a pocket knife is something that's been going around, you know, has been around since what, the Bronze Age? The Flint Age? I don't know, whatever you'd call it. So <clears throat> a lot of the knives I buy are just knives that really appeal to me for some reason. I like them. I like OTFs, like my new Guardian Recon, uh, or Guardian Tactical Recon. I'm really loving this little guy as far as a small gentleman's nice EDC folder. This is the MKM uh, Clap with titanium bolsters, M390, I mean, titanium pocket clip, titanium spacer, raw micarta. This is a splendid little elegant, beautiful piece of work knife. <clears throat> but I asked myself a question. Now, I haven't made a decision, so I'm actually kind of asking for feedback from the audience here just to see what people think. Maybe they've gone through the same, de same decision-making process at some point themselves. So, you know, when I think about EDC... I buy knives that appeal to me. I like the look, I like the feel. Maybe I like the action. I like the blade steel. I've got LMAX, which is incredibly tough, great knife steel, M390. I've also got some of my Civivi folders. I got my Spyderco Paramilitary 2. I've got some other lion steels that are even more beautiful than this. <clears throat> and so <clears throat> I, I kind of look at this and I say, okay, so I'm asking myself a question. Part of it could be because I just like to mix things up. <laughs> um, if you know me or you even watch the channel, you're probably picking up on a pattern. Someone who's gone through 27, I had 28 motorcycles, but I've had 27 of them since 2006. So that's, you know, 1.4 motorcycles per year for 14 or 15 years or whatever. And so <clears throat> it's kind of, uh, do I have just in a short tension span? Probably, not going to lie. <laughs> But also, you know, you just want to try different things and see what works and what doesn't. And I don't know, but that's just that's just part of my makeup. I'm always playing with something new, looking for the latest and greatest, whatever. It's not about a bragging thing or whatever. I just, I, you know, it's just, it's just my hobby. It's what I do. Um, and I do the same thing with knives. I do the same thing with guns. I have something for a while and I just get bored and want to mix it up. But here I am actually putting some, I'm trying to actually put some thought into this. So I think about the kind of knives that I typically carry. I carry this one a lot. I carry my spider Mar uh, paramilitary a lot. I carry this. Sometimes I'll, I'll carry, if I'm out riding, maybe I'll carry a little bit of a cheaper knife that clips in the pocket, like the Benchmade Sedula, which is a U.S. made but it's um, S30V. It's, it's a good quality, but it's a $100 knife. <clears throat> and that's because as I'm out riding and stuff, <clears throat> in my head, I'm like, these pocket clips are strong. They shouldn't be going anywhere. But do I want to have a $270 knife plus tax go flying? Do I want to have a $230 knife plus tax? I mean, it's $500 worth of knives just for those, right? So do I want to scratch them up, nick them up, bang them up, drop them down the road? Um, and even when you go to use them, you know, sometimes you got to be careful. I'm trying to cut a zip tie off the bike or something. And if I miss and slip with the knife, I may hit the metal frame and nick the, you know, things like that. So I kind of think about that stuff. So there's the ideal where I'm, I love the idea of having a good, really well engineered, beautifully crafted, high quality tool. And so it is about more than just looks. I got it that they're looks, they're works of art, but they are meant to be tools. These shouldn't be safe queens or 
you know, things like that. You, you should go out and use them and, and they will get banged up over time. But <clears throat> when I pay that much money, part of me is like, oh, I don't really want to bash the shit out of it <laughs> um, and, and have that happen. So, but then I started thinking, well, I think about what I could do with this knife. Like, oh, if I had this knife, it's really strong, it's pretty, it's good. If I have to use it as a defensive weapon in a pinch, if I couldn't get to my gun or if I was somewhere where I couldn't carry my handgun, uh, which luckily in Georgia isn't that many places. But if I did, you know, okay, knife's better than nothing. So having more of a tactical uh, knife that's very sharp and pointy stabby would hold up to some abuse is a good idea. <clears throat> Allergies are kicking up this morning. I got to do these reviews like after I, f I always do them like a lot of times, like right after I first wake up. <laughs> so i um, still clearing everything out from sleeping with my allergies. But uh, I start thinking about, you know, there's all the things that I could do or maybe envision in your head you might do. But then I'm thinking, well, what's the reality on a daily basis? What am I actually using my knives for? Am I more likely to need a screwdriver? Am I normal, uh, more likely to need a pair of twizzle, uh, twi uh, Twizzlers? I could go for some Twizzlers right now. Or, uh, 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 you know, a screwdriver, regular. Uh, am I more likely to need a can opener? Well, maybe not so much a can opener, but maybe like a small saw or, or something like that, tweezers. What are the things I'm more likely to need on a daily basis? You know, am I stabbing into really tough materials or defending my life or something like that? Or am I trying to open packages or tighten something I notice? I'm out riding around the bike and something's loose and I'm looking for a multi-tool or something. And so I started thinking, I'm like, well, these knives aren't as cool. You know, when you're looking at a Swiss Army knife versus something like that, you're like, okay, it's $25, $50, $42. These are relatively cheap. I could buy 10 of these for, you know, what I paid for those. And that's just a little tiny percent of my higher end collection. <clears throat> but as nice as those are and as fun as those are to collect and, you know, yeah, they're probably a harder use knife and, and would stand up because of the materials and kind of being over engineered and stuff. But on a daily basis, what are you actually using a knife for nine times out of 10 or 99 times out of 100? And so that's where I started thinking about these. I'm not going to carry a Leatherman. I don't really need pairs of pliers and stuff. But do these types of knives actually make more sense, even though they are nowhere near as cool or conversation pieces like these? I'm on the fence on this because part of me really just likes these knives. But if I'm just opening up a letter, if I'm just opening up a box from Amazon or cutting a zip tie, which is probably 90% of what I use a knife for, <laughs> I'm, not I'm not doing meal prep and, and any of that stuff. I'm not doing bushcraft because I hate camping because I don't have, uh, you know, I like my air conditioning and I got six dogs at home that need taken care of and I'm not bringing them all with me. So, you know, what am I really using knives for? And so I started thinking about, you know, Swiss Army knives and these multi-tools. Um, and I'll go through what I like about them and why I'm thinking about going this route, but why I haven't committed. So there's two reasons why I haven't committed to this yet. First of all, your standard Vic Victorinox, you know, the quality's there, they're good. Um, <clears throat> I don't like the shiny plastic handles. They feel cheap to me. They're also very slick. Um, I don't like the non-locking blades. And these are very small. Now, if I've got to go into an office somewhere and I've got to be very, very discreet, I mean, is that all that much smaller than that? Now, I will say because it doesn't have a pocket clip, no one would see that sticking out, although I could just throw this in my pocket instead of clipping it there. But the non-locking blade, in case I have to pierce something, um, the fact that it's just very small, it's very, it's, to me, it, uh, this is like, I don't know. It's one of those things if you're traveling and you just need something that doesn't look like a weapon and you check it in your bag, obviously, you don't try to get this on an airplane. <clears throat> Not anymore, anyway. Used to be able to back in the day. But, um, you know, something like this is probably something better that you could travel around with because you go to certain countries that don't allow you know, a locking blade. And the fact that you got a can opener and a screwdrivers and things, yeah, it has a little blade on it, but most most places you go, no one is going to give you any hassle over something like that. This is kind of the ubiquitous universal, you know, pocket knife. <clears throat> now, there are some larger ones that do fit my hand a little better, but here's where they kind of feel short. So I'll go over what I like about them and then where they kind of fall short. And I'm looking for suggestions because I feel like there's a place missing in the market between something like this and the utility, but 
the fast one-handed opening, the, the positive liner locks, the pocket clips. There's some things where I feel these excel, and if I could find a hybrid between the two, I think that would do the trick. So with the Swiss Army knives, you go to the larger knives. Um, there's two series of them, kind of. There's what they call the Ranger Grip, and these are the Delamont-based. Um, while it says Victorinox, the company Wenger, or Wenger, um, was purchased. Those were the only two companies that were authorized basically by the Swiss military to produce the knives. And they've both been around for, you know, 100 plus years. So there's Wenger. Um, those were made in Delamont, which is really hard to see, but I can actually see this one does have stamped. Um, I can see part of it because part of it, it's actually underneath the bolsters. But this one is one of the one of the Wenger designs that, that uh, Victor Knox acquired that company when they went out of business. And so the grip is a little different. Some of their tools were different, but now they're kind of incorporating some of the blade styles and the handles and things like that from the Wenger series. But then they're you know they've changed like the um, can opener on it as an example, um, and that's the traditional uh, Victorinox style. So um, I actually kind of preferred the old Wengers. Um, my buddy from high school that had it in, in his junior year in high school, um, and that was 1988 or 89, still has it to this day. I, the designs were a little bit nicer. They felt a little better. They were a little sturdier, <clears throat> like the can opener design. The blades were a little taller and therefore had a little more meat on them, a little more belly. But um, anyway, this is what we've got today. So there's the Wenger style, and there are some things going for this, but then I feel like there's some things going for this. Um, and I'll go over what I wish would be the perfect do everything tool. And maybe some out, someone out there has a suggestion. So this is the Ranger 15 or 79, I believe. So this one has got the blade. You've got the screwdriver, which does lock. So this one's kind of interesting. This also has a lock blade. So let's cover that. It is one hand opening, which is nice. And you can't flick it open. It's not going to be as fast as an OTF. It's not going to be as fast as thumb studs or, or a flipper. However, you can grab it and open it. So that is handy. If you're trying to hold something, you need to open it. Closing it, of course, you, have, you, know, you can close it one-handed, put it against your leg or something like that. So this does work in that regard. It's not as quick as some, um, but you do have one-hand opening. And you do have a locking blade. Even though there's a little bit of play, it's a fairly sturdy lockup. You'd have to be a complete numpty to, to, to jam that so hard that it closes on your fingers. So there is that. So I do like that. It's a little big, but it does give you a nice comfortable grip. When the blade is open, there's not really any hot spots. These don't stick out enough. The one part that does stick out is that, and it's out of the way when the blade's open. So that's pretty good. You've got a nice long blade. It's got a little bit of flex in it, but it works. Uh, reasonably sharp out of the box. The point is okay. A little stabby, but it's nothing like that. Certainly nothing like that. So, but it's decent. Um, you've also got your screwdriver, which is kind of cool because when you put pressure on it, that actually pushes in and locks in place so it won't close. Right now I can close it. When you push it in, now it's locked in place. There's a little notch there that fits with a notch there. So as soon as you put pressure on it, it locks in place. So that's pretty good. You got a bottle opener, can opener, wire stripper. Again, that's something I actually use fairly often. You got your uh, small screwdriver, you got your can opener. Um, hey, if you're out in the yard and need to trim some branches or something, you've got that. Um, then you got your tweezers, you got your uh, toothpick, you got an awl if I got to punch a hole in leather or do something. Um, then you got a corkscrew, which I really don't use as much. I kind of rather have the screwdriver. I probably should have bought the Ranger 78, which would be this identical knife, but it would swap out and put a screwdriver. So I kind of like this, although it is a bit big, but I feel like this makes a good knife. Um, my biggest problem with this is, well, that's just a choice. I could have gotten the one with the screwdriver, but not having a pocket clip. But then I look at this and I'm like, this one's too big. And so not having a pocket, if I had a pocket clip, it would just be really bulky and st sticking up in my pocket. I mean, there's a big difference <laughs> in your pocket if you were to clip it between that. When you think about how much it's going to open up your pocket and this is going to be sticking out the top, that, I don't know that the pocket clip would work. So then I'm looking at something like the Adventure. The problem with this one is it's two-handed opening. Now that's okay, but it is smaller. It is lighter. It's a good bit thinner, but it's still a decent size knife. It is locking, 
But unfortunately, the way they do this is it's a liner lock, and that isn't going anywhere. It's it's fairly stiff. But you, this is a two-handed opening, or you'd have to put it against a table to close it. So no one-handed opening. Got to use two hands. And you almost have to use two hands to close it. But it does have a locking blade. It's fairly sharp, although that point is very blunt. That's my biggest problem with the Victorinox blades is that if you had to pierce like a thick plastic package or something, you're really having to put a lot of pressure on that. So they maybe they do it for a safety thing because they don't want it too sharp. I feel like you know, ha having a dull knife, having a dull tip, I think makes it more dangerous because then you really are having to put a lot of pressure to push it through some tough plastic or some kind of polymer packaging. And if it does slip, you've got you know all that extra force that's going to drive it into whatever's behind it or, or into your hand or whatever. So I'd rather have a, a very sharp tip that just takes a little bit of pressure and then boom, I can slice it open. But I do, you know, I think if the liner went that way, then I could push it that way like I would push this knife and then close it. But because it goes the other way, you have to kind of shift your grip and go that way. But then because you're shifting it, then your finger's not in the good place to push because you're kind of like wrapped around the side because you're pushing the knife and it wants to rotate. So you kind of almost have to use two hands. It does have the nice can opener with the small screwdriver. It has a flathead here with the bottle opener and the wire stripper. And this one locks op open as well, but it uses a liner lock that you have to push out of the way. Now, some will say that's more secure because here, if you don't push enough pressure down, it could then unlock and, and slip and maybe you, you slip and scratch whatever you know, you're working on. So here it is a more positive locking experience, but then again, two hands to close it. This one doesn't have a saw, which I like because I, I don't know how often I'm gonna use a saw and it's lighter, uh, makes it thinner. And so here, it's like I'm struggling to find one like this that's a little bit smaller, but not that small. <laughs> I'm trying to find the Goldilocks here that has enough tools on it to make it useful for the things you're most likely to encounter during the day, um, but has a pocket clip. So it just clips in your pocket so it's not down in the key in the pocket with the keys or whatever, and you got to reach down into the pocket and get it. Maybe it's rolled around, so now it's upside down. You got to shift your grip when you pull it out. It's nice to just pull a knife out, flick it, ready to use, close it, slide it back in the pocket. Same thing here. I slide it out of the pocket, cut whatever I'm cutting, close it. So you may be saying, well, why don't you just use those? And I may. That's where I'm on the fence. I, I like the idea of, like I said, I love the notion of these and the quality and the fidget factor and all the things and the toughness and what I could do, what I could do with this, how this will handle a lot of things. But all I'm really handling are Amazon packages on a daily basis. So I'm like, this is probably do just as well, but give me those additional tools that normally I'm like, ah, oh, shit, you know, I'm, I'm not going to take this and use that tip as a, you know, a pry bar. I'm not going to use it as a screwdriver. I see people doing that with knives all the time. And I freaking cringe, especially when the knives are, you know, several hundred dollars. Not going to do that. <clears throat> so I'm constantly running out to the garage or somewhere to grab, you know, a pair of tweezers, grab a, a, a bottle opener. I got to run back in the house. If someone brings me out a beer at the pool and I realize, oh shit, it's not a twist off. I got to go back in the house, get a church key or whatever to open it. Um, screwdriver, I'm out there tightening something. Uh, got to go get a screwdriver. Um, whereas I, I could have these things in my pocket. The problem is the one-handed opening. The tip isn't pointy enough for me. I could just get out my sharpening stone and just tweak that and probably get it a little pointier. But I mean, if I was doing this that hard, because I'm actually hitting it like pretty good, if I did that on my Guardian Tactical, I'd be piercing the end of my finger. <laughs> now, maybe that means it's a stronger tip and less likely to snap. I don't know. I just feel like it could be a little pointier. I can address that. The things I can't address is one-handed opening and closing and a pocket clip. Now, I have seen some mods where people take a pocket clip and double-sided sticky tape and stick it on there, but I'm looking for something that's designed that way and comes that way. So I've seen there's some Boker tools, but the problem with these is if, if I could get a pocket clip on this and get rid of the saw, the problem is in this style, I haven't seen one that gets rid of the saw. This one is a three-layer, and I'd be looking for the two-layer. If I want the three-layer saw, like if I actually was going to be at my friend's property out in the woods and might need to cut branches out of the way or something like that, you know, okay, great, I'll take this one. But for EDC, could I get, you know, a blade that will do all the things that I need here? Give me the extra tools, but give me the convenience. Give me the faster opening, the easier closing. Give me the pocket clip so that I'm not giving up things here. This is a better knife. This is a better knife. Quality, fit, and finish, everything.
right? Edge retaining ability, <clears throat> ease of use. It's a better knife, no doubt about it. But this for EDC, a Swissami knife is a good enough knife for pretty much anything you're going to run to. But I am giving up some some of the features like pocket clips and one handed opening. So this is where I'm at, audience. Make some suggestions. I'm looking for basically a knife like this that's thinner. There's another company called Swiza that I want to check out, but I don't see that they have any one-handed opening. They do have locking blades, though. And maybe theirs are going to be a little bit more in line with this, but again, no pocket clip. There's Ruki, there's Boker Tech Tools, but a lot of those have so many tools. I don't want something that's this freaking wide. I don't want something that's even this wide or wider. And that's where I feel like there's a, there's a gap in the market for having a good, quick, one-hand opening, um, Swiss Army style knife that has enough tools to make it useful but keeps it with that two layer design so it's thin, it's light, and I need a pocket clip. So if you can help me find that, I may start carrying this just because at least it checks enough of the boxes, it being thin and having enough tools, you know, has a decent blade for cutting, even if I got to work the blade a little bit for piercing, but it does lock. So I feel like I need that as a safety item because I do occasionally have to jam a knife into something and I don't want it closing on my fingers. And when you're used to something, it's just security. You don't even think about it. You just take it for granted. The same thing with an OTF. If I got to really punch through a tough piece of plastic and then start wrenching and trying to cut something like that, I know I'm, it's safe. I'm not going to hurt myself. <clears throat> so in order to, I don't know why, I don't know why most locks don't lock or most uh, knives don't lock. I know a lot of states or countries are like, oh, we don't want to have a locking knife. Well, a, knocking, a locking knife is safer for the user, which I think is important. But whatever, they have their laws, is, is even if I think they're dumb. So tell me what your suggestions are. I think of these, I like the one-handed opening. This is just too big. It's a little too big for pocket carry. It's a big, fat, bulky knife. And to not even have a pocket clip, I'm like, eh. This one is great. Very useful, but it's just too little. It's tiny. It feels like a toy in my hand. I don't like the super slippery, cheap plastic. This is ABS plastic. It's a little bit different. It's got some texture to it, so it feels a little better. It's not rubbery. It's hard, but it feels good. But I'm trying to find the damn Goldilocks, <laughs> and I just can't seem to find it. So do I settle for this? Or do I just keep carrying my, my normal tactical folders and things like that? But then at the end of the day, all I have is a blade. And I've got an expensive knife that do I want to get scratched up? Some will go, eh, don't be a wuss. It's a tool, use it. I get it. And I have some that I do beat on a little bit, my Spyderco and stuff. But some of the other ones are nice and they're really nice. I want to keep them that way. But um, even if I did, again, I'll just have a blade. Do I need a $300 blade or a $200, $30 blade or whatever, you know, to open an Amazon package? No. That's where I'm at. So this was less of a review, <laughs> although I'm kind of reviewing the features of each and stuff. And it's more of a, help me find the right EDC. Help me find something that bridges the gap between the best pieces of something like the Victorinox Adventurer with the one-handed opening of this and the pocket clip and pocketability of those. If, I, if there's something out there, let me know. Anyway, that's what we got for today. I think I'm going to go riding before it rains. It's supposed to rain all weekend. So I'm going to try to get a ride in this morning. And uh, Saturday morning coffee with Dave will be premiering in 20 minutes. Although by the time you're watching this, that will be past. But anyway, have fun, YouTube. Let's see what suggestions you got.